cloud. Okay, Lila Tov, everybody. This should be our eighth class already in the Rambam's Haktonal Parish of Rishnayis. In the Rambam Le'am, we're on the bottom page, Chafzai, in two lines from the bottom. In the Sephiria text, we're on section 7.48. We discussed how the Navi has special status when it comes to making emergency powers, but he doesn't have any special status in the normative way of coming to Allah through logic and svara. He can't say, well, God told me this logic makes sense. No, that can't be. God could tell you a harah shah if he wants, yeah. but he can't tell you what how we use our minds, of what the intellectual understanding of Gemara is. And we'll see more about this later, why that is so. So now we're just going to finish up this topic with a few lines, and then we'll move on to the next section over here. V'chein amru chachamim, so did the rabbi say in the Gemara, chulid, hello kim, that's a lotion of, uh, of no. Even if Yeshua ben Nun told me with his mouth, I wouldn't listen to him, I wouldn't accept from him. This is talking about logical understandings of the Gemara. Amr, another Gemara says, in Yav Elio, if Elio tells Allah, and the Allah is Yom Rechotzin Beminal, if he says you do Halitza with a soft sandal, we believe it. But Sandal ain't shown law, but with a hard sandal, we wouldn't list them because that's not the law. Yer Tzalom, what they mean to say in these two Gemaras, Shein Lahosi, Vein Ligrova, Mitzvah, Derek, Nevoa, Bishum, Bonin, we don't add or decrease a mitzvah through prophecy anyway. Vechain, in Yoid, Novi, even the Novi said, I swear, and he's a trusted Novi. Shakodesh Parchu, Omer, I love. Shadin, the mitzvah, Bonish, Kach, Bekach. Sorry. God told me this is the law. And as far as plonies, he, MS, and this logic is the true logic. And therefore, you must rule my way. Oh. Yeah, rogue Anavi. You Ooh. kill him. How? Oh. Navi Sheker. Kamoshia Sadno. Because the Navi is for sure false, as we have explained. What? Shane Torin is Suna Achare Hanavi Arisho. There's no Torah to be given after the first prophet motion. Uh, You're going to open this all up to Jesus Christ. Ah, God, that's why there's no way we would have listened to Jesus. He came to us and we said, go, go to hell. We don't want you. We want to kill you. You can't tell us what to change. Change the laws. You can't add or subtract. Because lo ba he, it's not in the heavens. That's Torah says that in the heavens. So here's Shana Kodesh Lil Mod Mina Nevoim. And therefore, Hashem says, we can't learn from the prophets. But from the chachamim, we're men of logic and understanding. Now, a Navi can use his logic, his own human logic. He says, you know, God didn't tell me anything. I'd like to offer my opinions. Okay, we'll count you one amongst everybody else. And if you're part of the majority, we'll, we'll listen to you with the majority. So just to, to the sandals, so the is you believe a soft sandal, not a hard sandal. That's right. That's, that's just a technical. Yeah, so he's so saying he's not saying anything. He's changing the law. He's changing the law. He's saying God came to me and said you can use a hard sandal. That's right. That's up. And, and, use our and look, but we talked about this a while ago. We said the Navi can't come and tell you something. That's right. He's just repeating this. He's just repeating this. It's okay. He's just repeating. Okay. After, after he told you the Navi could tell you to, to, to use an altar outside the base of Migdash in emergency measures, he's got to get back and say, but don't forget, he can't change any laws. And therefore, the Torah Remember, tells us. You can change them temporarily. Lo Omar, it doesn't say in our Torah, Ubasa El Hanavi, Go to the prophet who's in these days and he'll tell you the halacha. No, it says, You go to the coin, the levi, and the judges. And the rabbi spoke a lot about this, and it is all to rule. Okay, that ends this side point. It's a big side point of Nevius. Now we are going to what is most for sure the most important section of this Hakdama of the Rambam to Mishnais. 
because the whole point of that Dhamma is to show, really the Rambam wrote this for the masses who were ignorant and to dispel the notions of the characters. And he's really wrote this to show you how there is a seamless continuity and, and, and connection between the written and the oral. That's what he's trying to show. And therefore he showed how prophets fit into this whole thing. But now he's coming to the main thing. And, uh, and the main question is what was actually given at Sinai? That's the question. And he's going to describe different parts that make up what we call the Torah Shabbat Beth. And then he's going to come to another point. He says, I don't understand. If God gave us the Torah, we're very clear about it. How can there be so many arguments in the Talmud? How can there be so many arguments in the Talmud? That, that, uh, that if anything, that, does, that goes against the idea of Torah Misina. If Hashem told Moshe and everything was clear, then where, where did the Machlokasim come from? This is the topic he's going to address over here. This is a very long section. And uh, I was able to find an interesting, uh, uh, some notes from someone else who gave a class on this. And I'll show it as time is necessary for it. So this is in my book on page Chavches, it's section Gimel, but in Safari, it's section eight. Because so we shall see. This is what I learned. This is what I learned. We shall see. We shall see. We shall see what's going on. That is not the, the main issue over here, as we shall see. When Yeshua Benun died over Shalom, remember we said that Moshe taught the Torah. We already explained earlier who we taught it to, taught it to everybody, right? Now, he gave everything over to Moshe, to Yeshua. Moshe gave everything to Yeshua. Now we continue this story. After the interruption, we continue the dissemination of Torah. Yeshua died. So right before he died, so to say, he taught the elders that which he received. Okay. And that laws that they extrapolated in their time. For enough of machlokas, there was no arguments. Everything was clear. Yeshua gave it over to the elders. And if there was a machlokas, it didn't last for long. Now remember, machlokas, what? If it's a new situation, how do we deal with it here? God didn't give us every single detail. God did not write in the Torah every single detail about Shemitah. He didn't write every single detail of all the laws, the agricultural laws. There was no practical application of it for the 40 years in the desert. So invariably, there will be shyness to be asked because, well, what is exactly the shear and what's exactly this and what's exactly that? Now, Hashem told Moshe a lot of things, but we shall see a lot of details he purposely didn't tell. So, okay, so if there's any machlokes, Baskova did not be rolled They would make a vote between the majority of the elders to decide those details. And about that, it says in Savior Yeshua, and that, that's what it says. It says, quote, And all the days of the elders who had long days after Yeshua, they continued the transmission. Then the Zikanim taught it to the prophets. And the prophets learned one from another. The Ainsman, and there was never a time of this Jewish history, really of any Jewish history, where there wasn't contemplation and innovation. In other words, where new scenarios would come up and they'd have to think about it and, and make decisions. Every generation of scholars would take the previous law. There's a legal term for that, you know, all the previous judgments. Precedents. They take all the precedents of previous generations as the basis that was agreed upon. The alum de ma'am, they would learn from them. Umachachmin, and they'd innovate based on new scenarios and they didn't do discussion. Isn't that 
What? That's common law. Common law? Yeah, it's based on well, but precedence is also. That's what it is. Yeah. And those uh, primary things where there was no there was no argument on things to pass. There was, there was a vote, they decided and finished. We move from there. Probably the best example of this in recent history is all the coronavirus shots. It, it, because we're combining two things, Corona. Okay, we've had we've had pandemics in the past, but not in a modern technical world. The last <laughs> pandemic was the Spanish flu in the 1900s, 1917. and and, and weren't a lot of Jews around at that time. The last one is really going back into Europe with the cholera epidemic in times of Akiva Eger. So it's probably a good 200 years since we had a good old fashioned pandemic affecting the Jewish world. So now you have a pandemic with ultra modern technology, with cell phones and Zoom and this and that. And believe me, Moshe Rabbeinu did not discuss Zoom with them. Right? So now, so what do we do? So what do we do? We look at all the precedent, the common law until now, and then we apply it. And obviously, there's going to be machlokasi. Now, the point is this is where, of course, we will see a little bit later on. There became a point where we didn't have a, an established Sanhedrin where we could have agreement. The, after the second destruction of the temple, we lost that power of Sanhedrin. And because of that, we didn't have one group of rabbis. That's where the problems really started, really a little during the second temple uh, near the end, Beis Hillel, Beis Shammai. That's when it began. We're not up to that yet. We're not up to that point yet. Now, so let's continue the story. So now we have prophets, and in another place, the Rambam lists all the prophets that one gave to another, which we will get there shortly. I'll speak it out. So that prophet, 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 all those. And now we come to the men of the great assembly, which is the beginning of the second temple era. And who are the men of the second temple era? Lots of prophets. Haggai, Zechariah, Malach, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, Ezra, Nechemiah ben Chachiloi, Mordechai, Subevel ben Sha'altiel. Now, these were all prophets. Now, that's okay. Prophets are allowed to learn Torah. They're Chacham and Chacham and two. The Nilvuleila and accompanying these Nevi'im was Hashlamas, what finished up to the total of Mea Asra Zakein. 120 elders mean from what we call hacheresh v'hamatzker. That's a very difficult two words to translate. Hacheresh and masker really loses a lot in the translation of uh, the Hebrew, but it means the, the scholars who uh, went into uh, exile together with Yechonia. So these were, these were great scholars over there. And uh, so that made up the 120 of them. Okay, I'm just trying to find where my place is over here. Let's, over here. Oh, oh, over here. You're in this book? Yeah, where are we in this book? Okay, so here page, is page Kaftet. Yeah, uh, yes, I got it. Chavit Yes. That were exiled. These were craftsmen of Torah. There's a literal translation yeah. over here. Okay, so we have these people. These Bonu Nugam and they also reflected. Kasher also I called them like the previous Jared Nuzlahem. For God's Zerus, they made various decrees, the Taktu Takonas, and they established certain legislation. And the last survivor of the Anshe Knesset Sagdola, Ureshi Sachachomim, and Iskarmavishi, that's the beginning of the first scholars that begins in Pirkeyavos, is Shimon Atzadik, with Shimon Atzadik, by Koen Gorobodor, he was a high priest in that time, and he is the transitional stage. The men of the great assembly to the next set of all the people that are listed in Pirkei Abbas. Now, so that goes on for generations and generations. Because here he is Manachareim of Rabbeinu Hakadosh. Now we get to the time of Rabbi Yehuda Hanos. Okay, so the Anshe Knesset Gedola was at the beginning of the 420 years of the base on the Kush. So that, now we advance 420 years, and then we have uh, Rabbi Huda Nasi, who's about 150 years after the destruction of the temple. 
we'll see in a minute, we'll speak out where the connection of all the Masora was up to that time. But for Hoya Yochid Bedoro, the Ramam goes waxes eloquence about the virtues of Rabbi Yehuda Yochid Bedoro, he was a unique individual of his generation. The Echad Bismarck, one of the one of the signs. He had all the graces, the hamidos atovas, and the good midos. That he merited that everybody called him Rabbeinu Hakadosh, our holy Rabbi, Ushmo, and his first name was Yehuda. Name was Yehuda, and he also was the descendant of Shevet Yehuda. Okay. He was the epitome of wisdom and virtue. As it says in Gittin, the famous statement, from the times of Moshe until Rebuda Nosti, you did not find an equal amount of brilliance in Torah and political clout and wealth combined in one place. Usually you have a big scholar, but he's not powerful and wealthy and politically connected, or the reverse, but one who had both. He was the ultimate chassid, vanova, and humility, and distancing himself from excess physical pleasures. Shamru Gamke, as it says, Mishames Rebbe, when Rebbe died, Vatla Anavir's hate, real humility. And real fear of sin was nullified. Yeah. We know the Gemara and Suva said that before Rebbe died, he raised up his 10 fingers and said, Hashem, you know that all the effort I made for my 10 fingers was for Torah, and my little pinky didn't take any pleasure from the physical world in and of itself disconnected from me. So he's really telling us how big of a tzaddik as he was. And more like that. He had a very eloquent speech. He was way behind everybody when it came to Loshon HaKodesh. He was a master of the Hebrew language, which is very important. There'd be some words of the Torah that they didn't know. And you know who told them that? They learned some words of the Torah. But from Midivre Avodov, Mishorsa, from his Rebbe servants. What's that? We know what that word means. Because our rat master told us, Vizema Forsa Mathalmud, it's well known in the Talmud. They, they said they didn't know what the word Seirugim means. It says, Kores Amagila Seirugim. They didn't know what Seirugim meant. So it means not in order. They didn't know what the word Mitatea means. It's a broom. A master of it. And he had lots of wealth and assets. And broad means. As they said about him, Oharaye to Rebbe, that Rebbe's uh, stable mate, who Asir Mishvarmalka, was richer than the king Shvarmalka. Okay, the guy who ran his stables was richer than one of the major kings. And he also helped expand the people of wisdom of Akshel who sought it. For Ravat's Torah, Yisrael, he allowed Torah to be comfortable in the Jews. In other words, he supported Talmud Chacham. He supported people to learn. And because he had it all, he had the full package. For us of now he gathered up all the laws and all the words of the rabbis. And all the disagreements from the time of Moshe until our own days. Okay. And uh, some suggest um, there's a lot that say that the Rambam is a descendant of Rabbi Yudha Moshe. from Shevet And some suggest that the Rambam has a lot of affection for Rabbi Yudha because in a certain way, the Rambam wanted to be like a Rav Yudha Nossi. You got to realize, Rav Yudha Nossi in his day was a shtickle renaissance man. Oh, yeah. Right? Because 
he, he's going, we're going to see shortly, he commits the Talmud to writing. It's a big machlok, it's exactly what he did. We discussed this, uh, the Mishnah, whatever. But uh, which was an incredible uh, thing. It wasn't so simple. But he had the power to do it. Because to be able to do that, he has to have the money, the wealth, the power to get all the rabbis from all around the world to be in a certain area for a long convention for them to, to, to finalize this and discuss it and bring this all into reality. You had to have really connected. You have to be brilliant scholar, global outdoor scholar incredible connections financially and we knew he was best friends with marcus Aurelius. yeah okay so he was like a one in a million like moshe Rabbeinu was a one in a million and what does it say on the cover of the rambam which we saw the moshe moshe lo come commotion so the rambam really to a great degree was like that he was brilliant he was a doctor there was a certain time where he was wealthy i mean his brothers supported him a lot but he also had wealth so it's a lot there, but I, and he had he had government clout. He was best friends with the uh, what do you call it the uh, the king, not the king, the sultan, whatever. He was able to do a lot of things, whatever. He, he had power, guy. all these things. But unfortunately for him, he didn't have enough like Rabbi Huda Nasi had. It could be because in Rabbi Huda Nasi, the Jews weren't so spread out yet. Yeah. They were still mainly in Babel Eretz Yisrael. But now everything's besides Babel Eretz Yisrael. You've shifted into Europe, Spain, Spain France, Morocco. Poland, Russia, Morocco. That's already, it's a, it's a little bit more than one can Love bite it. off more than they can chew. And unfortunately, probably in his day, cost more machloikas than unity. But although at the end of the day, he turned out as the okay. But therefore, you see, there's a certain affinity uh, the Rambam has for you know, Yes. Who knows? Even if we're even if we're from Yehuda, you're not from uh, Rabbi Yehuda Anasi, who goes back to Malchus based of it. Yeah. So you know that's big Maybe Yehuda is one thing, but uh, there's a whole discussion about that as well. Okay, now let's continue. What else is happening? Shukibo Mishimo. One second. Something happened over here. Uh, here we'll Did something skip? One second. Well, now he's going back. No, I understand. Now we're going back. Uh, uh, oh, yes. Okay. I got it. And he himself was part of the transmission, yes, that he reviewed it from his father, whose name was Shimon. The Shimon Migamliel Aviv. And Shimon got from Gamliel's father. That's who, why he's called Shimon Ben Gamliel. So Rabbi Huda Nasi was the son of Shimon Ben Gamliel. He got his vision from his father Shimon, who got it from his father from Gamliel. Humi Shimon, and there was a Shimon before that. Vahumi Hill, he got it from Hillel. Vahumi Shmaya Vavtalian, and he received from Shmaya Vavtalian because his rabbis. And who are their rabbis? Behemi Yehuda ben Tabi, Yeshim ben Shetta. These are all the rabbis in Pirkei Avos, one after the other. Behemi Yeshua ben Prachia ben Itib ar Beili. Behemi Yosef ben Yuas, or East Strait of Yosef ben Yochana. Behemi and Tigna Shisoka. Behemi Yeshim ben Tzadik, which is the beginning of Pirkei Avos. Behemi Ezra. And he received from Ezra, Shemishuri and Chikdes Zagola. From the Anshik Zagola. Behemi who did Ezra get from? A tzaddik named Baruch ben Nuriya. And who did Baruch get it from? Yermio. From Yermio. So we're going back. Interesting. Yermio was at temple. the time of the second temple. First destruction. First temple. First temple. First temple. First temple destruction. destruction. What? Well, the prophets are giving over to the prophets. Well, not from prophecy. Out of being a chacham. That's what he said, that the elders gave it to the prophets. Now, how long was this prophet? This prophet is a few hundred years, many hundred years. Yeah. Now, here's a little break, but you'll see in a minute. Thank you, Yermio. Believe something. It has to be without a doubt. The Yermio got it. May I share a moment from someone who came before him from the prophets? Navi mipi, Navi ad It has to be prophet from prophet from prophet till the Zakanim. I'm a common be Yeshua benun. Believe they Moshe got it from Moshe and Yeshua. Now, what's what the gap over here right now is? From the Zikanim, so now we have the prophets, so let's say that's Shmuel. 
Okay. Uh, no, no. We got the whole book of Shoftim. Yeah. So there's prophets during the book of Shoftim. Nice. Okay. So that's 300, 355 years. And then you got second temple era, which is 410 years. Yeah. And you're talking your meals at the end of that time. So you got about 700 years. So that seems to be unaccounted for. So if you go in your footnote, the Rambam, not here, but in his Hakdama to Mishnah Torah, he gives us the going all the way back. And I'll just say quickly, yo, quickly. He says, Yermio got it from Tsefania, Tsefania from Chavakuk, Chavakuk from Menachem, uh, Nochum, Nochum from Yoel, this is all Treoser. Yoel from Micha, Micha from Yeshaya, Yeshaya from Amos, Amos from Hoshea, it's all Treoser. Hoshea from Zechariah, Zechariah from Yoyada, Yoyada from Elisha, Elisha from Elio, Elio from Achio Ashiloni, Achio Ashiloni from David, David from Shmuel, Shmuel from Eli, Eli from Pinchas, who lived a long time, Pinchas from Yeshua, Yeshua from Moshe, Moshe from Hashem. And over there, the Ram says, it comes out, we have a straight connection from Moshe till Rabbi Uranasi. And then he goes afterwards in, in the Mishnah Torah to go even further than that. So we have, we have names, places, and everything that are all accounted for in this. Okay, very nice. So now we have now recorded our history up to this point. We're going to begin on Sunday from Asher Kolal Hadeos. Because now what we're going to do is he's going to explain the explanation of what is this uh, oral law that we're talking about and how it was transmitted, the whole process. And it's going to be fascinating. It's going to be a very educational week next week in Yer Tzashem. That's going to be our last week for a while because then we're going to get the next week's Rosh Hashanah and that's going to knock out the whole week. So it's, but we'll get a bit done in this time. Okay. Thank you. Now let's put a little marker. See? There's the marker right there. Shkayach, everybody. Have an amazing 